What do you think about this intro, okay? Oh, hey! I was just looking at some pornography. Um, but we're also doing the AMA. So, at the $15 here, Kinda Funny Games Patreon, you come here, ask me questions. Not too many questions today. I like it. Just keep going. Yeah? Just, let's use this. Okay. Uh, can the kids hear you, Tim? I, they, I can hear me. So I okay, great, great, great. Hear me too. So, let's see. What the fir- what's the first question? What's a game that has received a ton of praise and recommendations that you just couldn't get into? P.S. You're the best. Thank you. And that was Stephen Osland? Stephen Osland, my dude from down in San Diego. Yeah. Uh, so I think this is a fairly easy one because I'm not a huge fan of platform games. So not not platform. Uh, Castlevania style. Like, are those platform? Yeah. Platforming 2D, games? 2D platformers. Yeah. So Shovel Knight. I could not get into it. Ooh. And I know, yeah, I, I know you. that that sounds crazy. Yeah, it does. Uh, I want to. I think that if I like dedicate enough time to it, I could. Because I really liked... Uh, the second Metroid Prime, which was on the no no no, no. Metroid no? Prime is a uh, the GameCube series. You're talking about uh, Zero Mission. Is it Zero Mission on the Game Boy Advance? Yeah, little what? Yeah, on the Game Boy Advance there was uh, Metroid Fusion and then Metroid Zero Mission. Okay, Zero Mission was a remake of the first game. Great, I think I like that one. Yeah, and I played on a trip that we went somewhere. I can't remember. Probably Tahoe. Probably Tahoe. Yeah. Yeah. yeah no. Tr- that the the. DS and GBA Game Boy games, uh, or not, well, sorry, the Game Boy and DS Castlevania games are more similar to Metroid than the old school Castlevania games. Those are more action oriented, more Shovel Knight esque. Mmm, cool. I want to get in Shovel Knight, and I feel like I just haven't gotten like the right trip. Mm. So I feel like, a, I want it on the Switch, which is happening, right? It's already there. Yeah, the all whole right, cool. series is on the Switch. Oh, all the of whole, them. The whole treasure trove. Yeah. Dope. Get it. So Great. hopefully when I fly to Italy, that's one of the games that I'll be playing. You should. Yeah. Paris. I'm flying to Paris. You, should, you need Sonic Mania too, Kev. I really do. I do. And uh, I probably missed an email somewhere. But uh, so yeah, never been a big fan of, of um, that particular game. Shovel Knight. Shovel Knight. That's the one. That's the one. Um, but <laughs> everyone says it's amazing. So it is. I feel like if I dedicate enough time, I could fall in love. Mm-hmm. I just haven't. And I think that's my biggest problem. Also, the Final Fantasy series, I've never enjoyed them. Uh, I had high hopes for this latest one, 15, and I just could not get into the, the playing style. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 15's a rough one. It had so much potential, and it just didn't hit it in all the right places. Uh, the, the new one, though, the, the they announced today, the Pocket Edition. Yeah. Uh, if they port that over to the Switch, I think it could be pretty good. Really? Because it seems like it's truncating and getting, cutting a lot of the fat. I feel like that's what they said about 15. No. Really? I thought 15 was supposed to make things like a lot, like gameplay wise, a lot smoother and no, 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 feel no. more. It's a different type action. of game. Yeah. Well, that it is more yeah. action y, but uh, I'm talking about just in terms, there's just a lot of just story beats and mismanaged plot devices that happen in 15. All right. So we've got a question from Dutcher Sned- Snedker. Okay. Do you want to look that like on, on the screen? I trust that it, it makes sense. Okay. Uh, he says, hey, Kevin, what do you admire most about your wife to be Paula? Congrats on your upcoming marriage. The glue is trying, is tying the knot. Uh, first of all, thank you for the cra- congratulations. Not super games oriented question, but sure, you took your chance to ask me a question. What do I admire most? Her ability to like handle situations. It, it sounds funny, but like. She started learning to animate, I want to say now, like four years ago. And when she started, her skills were, were not even close to there. And the progression of the last two years, or, well, at the time, during when she was in school, the progression of the last, her first two years, oh man, was really phenomenal. And since then, it's, she's gotten even better. And hopefully someday she'll be an animator at like a real production company making movies um but yeah i guess that's that's her like drive and determination when it comes to those things because she really went from these you know not the best drawing handmade animations to like actually having things that like i look at i'm like man that could be in a movie um and no wait not only that right now she's got one shot in rogue one i just saw her new reel that she made and it's like there's two little x-wings flying in the background and she did that, which is fucking crazy. Hell yeah. Yeah. Uh, but thanks for your question. Let's see. Next question. 
Jeremy Shook. Hey Kevin, what's your favorite game franchise? Game gaming franchises. My my all time favorite. Good old Metal Gear over here. Shockingly, I haven't beat Metal Gear Five yet. Mm. That like makes me sick to it's think not, about it. It's not shocking. I, that game is interesting because it's it's big and there's a lot going yeah. on, but it just feels like incomplete because it is. Yeah. And so it's like there's damn tragedy. Not a lot of uh, motivation to, to get through the storyline. Yeah. yeah. It. And it's just I feel like every Metal Gear has a point where it ranks up, like ramps up, and like the bosses get really fucking hard. But because you want to know what the storyline is, it keeps you motivated on going forward. Yeah. Where this one, yeah, like when I got to this level with the the skulls mm. getting all armored, I was just like, I don't know if I want to keep playing this. And then I didn't. Yeah, the thing about that game is the gameplay is ten out of ten. Ten out of Perfect. ten. This gameplay is the gameplay is so is so solid that I really feel like it makes like forgivable that the story is not it, fucking I, oh, ten absolutely. out of ten. Absolutely, it just is sad because Metal Gear, even in it's, its low points, is still the story such a fun is what's ride. Uh, so amazing and the boss about it. Yeah, as well, and the characters. Yeah, and yeah, absolutely. But I feel like that all comes well, like with the story, like the characters. Absolutely. Yeah, and even though like the like the connections between some of the games are so like, all right, Nano Machines, sure, sure. But it's so good that it's like fuck it, forgive it. Yep. All right. So I need to go, Kev. Okay. So I'm leaving you alone here. All right. I trust that you can do this. All right. All right. Bye. So another game franchise that I love, Uncharted. Man, I could play that series forever. They're so good. Um, really excited, excited for the newest one. Which, Tim, is the newest fran- is the new Un- Uncharted out for everyone? August twenty second. August twenty second. Okay. Today. Just so you know, it's August twenty second. We film it. Not sure when it's getting posted, but damn, that is exciting as fuck. Uh, hopefully, I'll get access to that soon. Uh, other franchises that I really like, video game franchises that I really like. Um, I mean, I mean it's hard because I I don't play as much as many video games as I wanted to. I really liked Prototype for a while, and then um, Infamous. So I'm always down to play new games of those whenever they come out. We haven't seen either one in in, in a little while. In, uh, Prototype way longer, and I, I think Prototype two wasn't as good as Prototype one. But anyways, those games are dope. But, oh, Gran Turismo. I'm so excited for Gran Turismo Sport. And that's coming out relatively soon. We've seen bundles with the PS4. Um, but, yeah, I, I like to play a lot of different games. And kind of, like, I jumped into Metal Gear Solid during Metal Gear Solid 2. When I was young, I played Metal Gear Solid 1. And I thought it was way too difficult. Way too, like, I didn't understand what was going on. Uh, and then... Much, much later, I got my hands on Metal Gear Solid 2, and that made a lot of sense, and, like, I just fucking fell in love, and then I went back, played Metal Gear 1, loved that, it was Solid 1, loved it too, and then Snake Eater came out, and, oh, man, I was all about it, and then 4, and 5, and it just, it it gets better and better, except for 5, the storyline's not so great. All right, thank you very much. See you next one. John Burleson says... Kevin, congratulations on unlocking down Paula. Thank you. Uh, can you throw the story of how you met and started dating again? Uh, how you guys met and started dating again? Yeah, yeah, yeah that's what you say. Um, so me and Paula. So all right. So let me take you back. Two thousand eight. Hard to get a job. Real hard time to get a job. And um, I was going to San Francisco State at the time. Wanted to find something close by. I had at that time no no actual work experience that worked uh, for retail, which there's a mall right next to San Francisco State University, and um, I really was trying to find anything there, and I was super desperate. Like I went to every single store looking to see if they were hiring, and nobody wanted me because I had no experience uh, doing retail. Uh, my sister used to work at a store it was called that is called Loxiton. It's actually still there. They sell French lotions and hand creams, and she decided that she was going to move with her boyfriend in, ba- in, no, in Tahoe. And I used to go and hang out with them. Like, every, like I had, like, a really crazy sc- schedule in 2008. Like, all my classes were really far apart. It was freshman year, um, fall of 2008. I had, like, five-hour breaks between my classes. So I'd go and hang out there with her and all the other coworkers. And eventually, when she decided she was going to leave... Um, she grabbed the manager and was like, Hey, like, do you want to hire my brother? And he was like, ah, I don't know. And she's like, he knows all the products. He can talk about stuff cause he's here all the time. And he was like, all right, fuck it. I'll do it. 
Uh, then fast forward like a year and a half later, uh, I'm working there. Everyone orig- that originally had a work there quit. Like four out of, so it was five of us, I think, that worked there at the time. Four of them quit. It was no reason in particular. <laughs> it's just they all kind of started moving. And it happened in like a three-week period. So we hired a bunch of people at that store. And uh, one, of the, one of the gals was uh, Paula. And when I met her, we had a great, great conversation. We just, because the way this place worked is uh, they had two people working there any given day. It would be eight hour shifts and four of them would be with another person and four would be by yourself. Um, And the first day that I hung out with Paula, I was training her and we just kind of talked about things that we liked. And the majority of the conversation was, uh, TV shows that we liked. So we were sitting there talking about like Arrested Development, which will forever be one of my favorite shows of all time. First three seasons are phenomenal. So well written and like thought put into them is fantastic. And then, yeah, we were talking about a bunch of other shows and we all like, they were all like all, all the shows that she liked were also shows that I liked. And we were talking about what aspects we liked about it. And there was a moment where like, I stepped back and I'm like, Hey, you're a vegetarian, aren't you? And she was like, Oh my God, I am. How did you know? And I was like, dude, you were just too perfect. There has to be something way wrong. And I was totally right. Um, then we stayed, we were friends, uh, for about three months and then we just started dating and now it's been five years. We're so happily in love and I can't wait to make her my wife and be wearing a ring for the rest of my life. So it's so soon. It's like a month away. It's August 22nd and my wedding is September 30th. So a little bit over a month and a half, but yeah, I can't wait. Um, thanks for putting that question, Josh, John, this next one is Josh J. Anderson. What's up, my homie Kev Dog? What gaming moments is your favorite? Uh, is it a giant set piece from Uncharted or special moments with emotion? What is it and why? Also, real quick, thank you for being awesome and liking, replying to a lot of my tweets to you. It always makes me smile when you remember me from Twitter during. Oh, yeah. I, I, of course, Josh hanging out and playing uh, Mario Kart. That was always a blast. Uh, uh, from the tw- the Twitter during a stream, I'll continue to bug you with tweets until the day you follow me back. Haha, <laughs> seriously, thank you, Kevin. Have a great one. Oh, yeah. All right, so favorite moments in video games. I mean, so many of them are probably Metal Gear, and they are big like set pieces, like big reveals, big moments. Like, ah, oh, they're just so many. It's it's one of those tricky things. Like. <sighs> Like the I don't know fighting Vamp for the first time, and just being feeling so overwhelmed. Like fighting Fortune for the first time in Metal Gear Solid Two, and just being like, "There's no way, like my bullets aren't fucking hitting this girl." There's so many moments of like the player, me, you know, not feeling like I can beat the the boss, and then figuring out what the strategy is, and then getting them that make you feel so fucking amazing. Uh, I think that one of the like. There's a game called Titan Souls, which is a very, very simple game. It's like, what, 15 bosses or something? It might be less than that, maybe 13. Um, All you have to do is go to them and fight the boss. And it's so insanely hard because it's that just, it's such a simple game where all the, the only options you have are dash, move around, and shoot the arrow. But it, 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 for me, the, the, the most satisfaction in gaming is figuring out how to f- defeat your opponent. And um, it's one of the reasons why I like r- racing games so much, because there is like a curve of like, oh man, this is a totally new track, and I don't understand like when to take the turn and all that. And after doing it, like r- taking a car down the track for the 30th time, and you know, hit the brakes now, pull the handbrake, let it go take that turn, let it drift, let it drift, fucking floor it. It's just one of those things like, oh my God, like that is the passion that I like, that I, when I feel that in a video game, it's hard to put down the game. Same like, it, those moments are just so amazing and I want to like have that forever. Um, But there are also like smaller moments, like the uncharted moments when you're like finding out what's going on with the storyline and who the bad guy is and the beautiful like landscapes, those are just like moments where it's like, whoa, I forgot that I've been playing for this for so long. And same with Zelda when you're opening something up or defeating um, one of the divine beasts where you're just like, whoa, 
this is fucking awesome. All that like work that I had to put into it really paid off. Um, and Josh, never stop uh, tweeting at me. I love him. I love all your tweets. Well, I like most of them. You don't say a lot of shit that's bad. So keep them coming. Austin Moore. Hey, Big Kev Dog. Congrats on your, the, on your prep for your marriage. My question is, what gaming revelations was most shocking to you? As in mine was the ending of Bioshock. What dramatic twist or change in the story stuck with you the most? Oh, it's a tricky one. What story twist stuck? I mean, I, I think Gone Home was probably one of the biggest moments of like, oh shit, okay, this is not the game that I thought it was. Um, I played it really late, but I still, I hadn't heard anything from anyone. And it was one of those things where Greg was like, hey, you should definitely go play this tonight. And I was like, yeah, okay. So I went home booted it up and it looked like a fucking scary game the whole time literally the whole time we're going like you're moving around and i've got both headphones in and i'm like fuck something's gonna pop out and this is gonna change and become a uh, like scary game and it never does there was that moment in the closet where something falls down i think it's a cross and you look at it and you're like oh fuck everything's gonna fucking be terrifying but it isn't and finding out like what that story was about is one of those things that like the, the build-up to it it was just beautiful. And I think that, that that is one of those twists that like sticks with me uh, the most. Uh, for other twists that like were crazy. I, I, don't, I don't play too many games with crazy twists uh, like that I can remember. I mean, Metal Gear, I feel like, none of, like not too many of those twists were like, oh my God, let me sit down and tell you that like this fucking... Psycho Mantis was still kind of in control of shit. Nah, you know, I guess a big moment in Metal Gear, which is my favorite franchise, Metal Gear 4, when they go back to Mo, Mo, um, Moses. I, fuck, I can't remember the name. But like the Metal Gear 1, essentially. And you're like, holy shit, this is the same place. I hate those fucking monsters, though. Like the, the little heads with the three arms. Fucking freak, the sh- freak me out so badly. Um, but yeah. So those are two, my two like biggest like whoa what a fucking crazy thing to happen. Uh, and thanks for your your question. Uh, Nicole Humphrey says, "Hey Kevin, what's your favorite and least favorite gaming genre and why?" I like to play a lot of different gaming genres, so I I'm not too like I feel like I, there's not one genre I, I like dislike. I guess rhythm games because I'm really, really bad at that. But I, I hope that someday like I can get like a guitar hero and learn how to fucking like I feel like that'll help me in life to be to understand how to play one of those, just learn how the timing and shit. Um but I, I think that probably my least favorite. I, I'm not a big fan of like fighting games. I really, really like Tekken, but I think out of all of them that is well and um um, Tekken and fuck, what is this? Oh, Smash Bros. Of course, those are the t- my two favorite games in in like the fighting world series uh, or fighting game series. Um, I'm I do not like Mortal Kombat or Street Fighter. I feel like I just I guess I'm stupid because like the controls have always seemed really difficult for me. Um, so yeah, those are my least favorite, my favorite type of games is probably puzzle games. And you guys have seen the whole GoPro thing. I just really enjoy looking at puzzles and finding a solution, but I'm also a big fan of like little stealth games like Metal Gear, man. They're like, they're always, there hits a point where it's like, oh, no, fucked up. Everyone is going to like kill me now. But like, until I hit that point, it's, it's so fucking fun to sneak around and be like the hidden voice. You know, just in the background or like the, you know, the, the fly on the wall, sneaking around, trying to get information, moving along. Um, Assassin Creed has their moments in that. Um, so, yeah, those are my favorite genres and least favorite genres in gaming. Uh, Brian Horst says, dearest big chem dog, who takes the loudest poops in the office? P.S. Will anyone pick up Colin's role and rain death and destruction on Greg's pumpkin mugs this fall? Uh, all right, let's start with the pumpkin mug thing. No, I don't think so. I think those pumpkin mugs will make it. I just don't think it'd be that funny to destroy them. Because, like, he's not attached to the pumpkin mug. You know? And that joke's been done already. Destroying a mug. 
I don't I don't think that like even if we had a special mug at this point and we stole it and like had another mug that was exactly like it and destroyed it, which was the original plan with the pumpkin mugs. Um, I don't, I just don't see it being as funny as it was the first time. So I think the pumpkin mugs, because there's more than one of them, I think there's three, uh, will remain for probably way too long. Way too long. Uh, thanks, Brian. Uh, last question. Mikey Dorothy. Good old Shannon. How you doing, bud? Is that you? That's you. Oh, why did I click on it? Now I see I clicked on it like an idiot. Oh, you look so cute in your little picture with the red shirt. Red fits you really well. How do I go back? I hate Apple devices. There it is. Cool. So you say, big Kev dog. You son of a bitch. How are you? I'm doing really well. Really well. Very tired. Just went to New York. And I'm exhausted. I stayed up way too late on those nights. Not having fun editing videos. It was fun, but you know, it's not the same kind of fun as like staying up playing arcade games all night, which we did a little bit of. Uh, my question is a deep philosophical question about yourself and I. You know, and I've been dying to know. Were you one of the kids growing up who ate Cheetos and other greasy shit, then touched Tim's controllers? You give off that vibe. Hey, fuck you, all right? I know that's an insult, and you know it's an insult. Fuck you. I'm going to keep reading now. <laughs> growing up shit like that bothered me to my core. What gaming etiquette did you have growing up? <sighs> Another one of my of mine is my friends fought me for the nice controller instead of taking the third-party garbage one when they were in my house. Oh, fuck, man. I mean, like, that's, that seems like the norm. If they're coming to your house, they get the nicer controls, you take the shitty one because your parents are too cheap and that's the polite thing to do. Um, what are you saying here? Hold on. Let me, let me see where I left off. The audacity! You always let the person whose house is have the nice controller. No, see, I totally disagree. I think that the guest gets the nice controller. You get the shitty one. Because they're a guest to your house and they're not staying for long. So when they leave, you get the good one again. Um, I didn't have too many of these rules. I think m one of my f like biggest things was don't fucking put discs down, not in their case. You know, y you, you look around and there's a disc sitting. God, when the graphic side was up, like, wh why are you a monster? You know, like that, that's going to get scratched. We all know that like these DVDs aren't going to fucking handle that well. And sure enough, you flip it over and there'd be scratches all over and then you'd get your fucking disc doctor and hope that would help. But it never would. It never would. Uh, other pet peeves that were like, um, well, uh, to go back to your what you asked, uh, did I get grease all over Tim's things? You know, I would say no, but Tim left and he's not here. So I have to stand up for what he would say. He would probably say, yeah. I remember him complaining a lot about people getting his controller dirty. I want to say that I cared enough to just not want to hear him complain that I would try not to, but honestly, I don't remember, and I asked him to be here with me to do this, but then he fucked me over and left, so I'm going to say probably, and I just, I'm very absent-minded when it comes to things like that, so I never thought about, like, oh, is the controller, like, are my hands dirty, too dirty for the controller, so... But Tim also seems like the kind of kid, and like I, I don't remember a whole bunch of stuff in my past because I, I don't sleep and like that fucks with your memory. Um, I, I feel like Tim made me wash my hands before using his controller. Cool, Greg. Do you, does that sound familiar at all? That sounds like one hundred percent what he used to do. Yeah, yeah. But I don't think it was just me. I think primarily me, but I'm sure that he did it to a couple other people too. Um, but like Tim always had the new console. I always felt like when I went to Tim's house, I'm like, oh, fuck, I get to play the PS2. Or, oh, shit, I'm playing the fucking N the N64. The N64, probably not new when he bought it, but, like, it felt super new. And he always wanted shit to be pristine. Uh, so, yeah, I probably had to wash my hand all the time uh, before uh, using his controller. And I, I'd probably, just to spite him, not wash my hands. And be like, oh, fuck, there's Cheetos everywhere. That sucks for you, dude. Uh, but yeah, as for me, I didn't really have that, like, any rules aside from, yeah, don't leave the discs out because then they get scratched or my mom fucking accidentally vacuums over them and then they get scratched. Or someone puts in the microwave and they get scratched. 
I actually don't think they get scratched and you put them in the microwave. They just go and they crack on the metal side. It's pretty cool. Um, if you've got an AOL disc lying around, which you shouldn't, it's fucking 2017. But if you do, put that bad boy in the microwave. It's not good for your microwave. Um, so do it when your parents aren't home. You know what I mean? Shannon, because you're so young. <laughs> um, uh, my, the only, I think, rule that I had with like my gaming stuff, and I like it. This isn't something I enforced and pushed other people to do. But like whenever I was playing with anyone or playing on my own, like the cable, I wanted to have it wrapped as neatly as possible. So whenever it was done, I like hated just leaving shit, and I, and I hate it. Like, cause we've got a pile of cables there that make me feel sick all the time, just looking at it right now. Ah, uh, cable management is so important. So I think that like the, what this AMA like I want to end at is just manage your cables. They have great thing, great tools and accessories that you can use to get all your cables and not have them be a wiry mess. Um, so Google it, Amazon it, manage your cables. 